Hi all, let's continue looking at the epic match at the moment at TSEC Season 14 Super Final. This is the fascinating Game 10. So Stockfish playing white in Game 10 against Leela. And the opening book is a little bit on the quirky side. D4 from Stockfish, Knight F6, C4, E6. So far pretty respectable. G3, and now C5, that's fine, kind of. It is Benoni, which is a little bit unsound. Uh, from a sort of modern perspective, most super GMs avoid playing the Benoni. Uh, but we get <laughs> a very unusual idea now. Instead of uh, the usual Benoni D6, we have a move which seems to be quite risky, B5. So why would this be risky? Well, the good intention of this, in a way good, is to sort of attack... Uh, the d5 pawn maybe be ready for b4 sometimes to basically cast some shadow around the d5 pawn uh, so let's see what happened in this game now so here stockfish playing white actually played knight f3 and it has already a very cunning tactical idea after bishop b7 to do something about d5 and that idea is to play e4 a pawn sacrifice so no knight c3 is needed actually this this pawn sacrifice actually tries to create some downsides of black's position black has a lack of development so the king's still in the center this is an unprotected piece can black actually afford to take on e4 the problem is one of the problems bishop d6 uh, you can see that e5 uh, and also if d6 now with b5 being played this is now check bishop takes b5 is check so white's going to clearly get a big advantage uh, so limited options this gambit has to be accepted it seems knight takes e4 and now stockfish casually plays bishop g2 we have bishop e7 and white castles so white sacrificing that pawn is there enough compensation well we see here after both sides now castle rookie one there is uh, this is a, a difficult position and it seems as though uh, this next boot next move by Leela uh, f5 was played there might be an alternative in knight d6 this might be possible uh, bishop f4 it looks pretty awkward for black though but it seems as though it might actually be technically possible to play in this way for example this continuation is about even uh, but if if knight f6 then that runs into d6 and if bishop takes bishop takes yeah the queen doesn't have to take and anyway a8 is hanging so here just take on a8 forget about d6 so that's absolutely uh it's it's a tricky position but it seems knight d6 was plausible this next move f5 now this brings back some memories this game actually the way white plays the way stockfish plays i remember uh, Lloyds Bank Jr. 1989 I actually won that and I remember I had a primitive strategy which I tried to use in in every game a hammer to the to all the nails that I saw which was getting pieces around the opponent's king here with this weakness created there's actually a lot more justification to think about how to get pieces to the king because these weaknesses these light square weaknesses in particular uh, that uh, f5 crates it slightly weakens g6 if you can get pieces around there they're going to be more effective than usual so that's something to bear in mind maybe a way of qualifying this primitive strategy the more weaknesses the opponent has you know the more to go for it literally go for it put put pieces around there and um, stockfish plays here at knight c3 okay and we have the move knight a6 on knight takes c3 b takes there's an idea sometimes of d6 if black plays d6 queen e2 actually hits b5 and e7 this is actually quite nice to win that b5 pawn this is sometimes a liability this b5 and if we look at this again if bishop f6 more natural rook b1 and here bishop f4 is awkward if the bishop's there then d6 is neglected uh so this looks unpleasant if d6 there's a gaping hole on e6 if taking here this kind of thing first hit the bishop then go to d6 is very pleasant for white so uh we have knight a6 
and now this is like really you know aimed at d5 in the spirit you could say of the opening to play well the knight couldn't use c6 anyway it's coming to try and put pressure on d5 you know the logic's clear the d5 might be a bit sensitive here um we have now knight takes e4 f takes e4 and this is where this idea you know put the resources around the opponent's king is uh to me uh showing a very nice decision here by Stockfish, very tactical decision, uh, wanting to get maximum pieces around the king. So what would you play in this position if I give you five seconds? Uh, starting now, white play. Okay, so this should be red to your bull, <laughs> your attacking bull. This this should be the red flag, basically, the, these, these weaknesses. It seems... Yeah, knight e5, great move. Because it means the bishop can come out and onto this diagonal, hitting immediately h7. And you can see that these light square weaknesses are being touched by the white pieces now. Uh, so, yep. If white had played rook takes e4, then black can put pressure on d5. And here, this is only enough, it seems, for only a small edge at most for white so this is a really interesting way of playing it if we look at this position again if c4 there might you might think knight c5 to d3 but this knight d5 and then actually there's tactics rook takes e7 there's tactics for example here bishop g5 threatening rook takes g7 to win the queen it just gets really good for white so it's it's quite dangerous um yeah so anyway but Against best play, knight c7, it's only a small advantage. So the way Stockfish plays it, this really gets this bishop around the king. And it's justified. It, it really is more effective than usual. Uh, so we have bishop d6 in, in this position. It's interesting already, fireworks are, are flying. Uh, if d6, and there's puzzles for this on Chessfold, if you go to chessfold.net, the improved menu puzzle, but there's lots of puzzles because there's lots of king safety issues. If d6, bishop takes e4 is actually possible, just sacrificing an entire piece. This is a really strange position in a way. Uh, so although black would be a piece up here, look what happens after the crude but effective, very, very effective, queen h5. It's not just that there's weaknesses here. There's nothing to repulse the attacking pieces. Often, you know, if the opponent's king is secure and they've got pieces around, your pieces become major liabilities. Here it's the opposite. It's as if they, they're free to roam here without too much comeback or too much risk of being trapped or whatever. Uh, so queen h5 with a big threat of just mating quite quickly uh, with bishop takes h7, the standard mechanism for mating. I'm sure you've seen it before, but just in case you haven't, like bishop takes, you know, as a, as a token. Uh, but say in this position, um, a sensible move h6, then actually bishop takes h6 is remarkably strong. Uh, so for example, g takes, check, and then mate. So forget g takes, and if rook f6, bishop g5. So again, even though white's a piece down here in this variation, I, it's just a really strong attack. If white can take on f6, and then seal like, some of the exits from, from the black king, it seems as though white can even just play like this, intensifying the central pressure. Now if taking, uh, then the bishop drops, then everything drops. Uh, so if knight b4 this it just shows disaster really uh for black there's a disaster scenarios it just seems a really really strong attacking position uh so yeah in fact so after knight e5 yeah d6 wasn't played uh we have bishop d6 but again uh you know now knight g4 and the bishop at leisure is going to like take on e4 here we have c4 bishop takes e4 uh, and c4 had the idea at least trying to target f2 uh if here after bishop takes e4 uh if knight c5 it's better the bishop actually doesn't go back to g2 
because then there's knight d3 and that justifies black's c4 quite a lot octopus knight and black's actually getting a, a big advantage but in this case the bishop can just drop keeping keeping an eye on h7 and controlling d3 this is better for white so okay so we have bishop c5 queen c2 the battery immediately fretting h7 now king h8 it's it's really interesting here how you might think f2 the knight's holding f2 what about h5 for example black gets uh, in big trouble with this kind of move of the check we have another scenario where queen g6 now <laughs> sacrificing the knight here is uh it's remarkable but piece down black can't really do much about white's attack even even with the f2 issue bishop takes bishop takes d5 just uh runs into bishop e4 check uh but what else you know white's threatening bishop g6 and, and queen h7 so it's it's really hard to defend this so bishop e4 this is just winning uh like this nicely checkmate so h5 is out of the question you might think well hold on what about uh h6 here bishop f4 shielding f2 and if knight b4 queen e2 and again you know this bishop f4 is not just shielding f2 as this variation shows bang knight takes h6 queen g4 check the bishop can switch in for bishop e5 to help the attack for example here bishop e5 check so if queen takes then that's mating and it's it's mating here if rook f6 just taking here and then mating so yeah this is really really tricky for black's king it seems uh for particular concrete reasons so things like h5 h6 are completely like ruled out so we have king h8 just offering the h7 pawn that's pretty diabolical for king safety and stockfish as we know is like amazing tactically uh so it actually takes chisels uh king safety even more undermines king safety even more bishop takes d5 and another switch of a resource to squares around the opponent's king rook e5 to h5 a great pivot move here with tempo we have bishop f3 and now queen g6 and it looks as though hang on isn't black winning material after bishop takes g4 uh just before we look at that if rook c8 there's the crushing bishop h6 these variations show how exposed indeed the black king can be yeah this is absolutely like crushing stuff uh, so we have bishop takes g4 queen takes g4 and now this time it's offering the bishop so a piece down offering the bishop uh, black first takes on f2 here though if king takes then queen e4 check queen d5 check rook h5 draws the king out and a rook sack here yeah <laughs> this this is just showing absolutely uh how the king can just get in get mated basically <laughs> yeah uh so uh if we look at this again you might think is is this really that convincing if the king has gone back uh yeah you know it's, it's drawn out it's drawn out if the king had gone to f6 then rook f5 check rook takes f5 rook f5 takes f8 check and this is uh mating so yeah it's uh black took on f2 though the other took on f2 king g2 king takes so what do we have here we have here again a position a piece down but it's just, the king's only got one shield around it one little pawn shield and we have check and now rook h5 yeah resources around the king made much more effective through absence of defensive pawns so uh maybe you know there's a big tactical lesson maybe i know we can't calculate as, as quickly as stockfish all this stuff but maybe intuitively we, we can think well hang on there's more justification for just going for it if, if the opponent's got weaknesses around the king so bishop d4 we have so a piece down queen h7 that the king has been chased here bishop h6 we have queen b6 uh on rook g8 yeah this f files now dangerous rook f1 check and rook g5 for example this is uh really quite crushing uh so once getting a big advantage there so we have queen b6 rookie one cutting off the king for a moment 
Uh, queen c6, the king goes to h3, also making use of that the, the rook's controlling e6 and then more checks there. Uh, so rook g8, we have rook f5 check, bishop f6, and now just casually g4. So Stockfish has really worked this all out. Peace down, but huge pressure. And what could black actually do in this position? Leader tries knight c7. If rook a e8, then uh, rook takes, and if rook takes, queen takes g7. The power of the pin piece is illusionary, and then that mates. And of course, if king takes, then we just take on g8, big advantage. So uh, not much black can do here after g4. So knight c7, g5. It's really kind of all over. If white gets this piece back, which white is getting the piece back, uh, this looks horrendous now after g takes. We have knight takes f6. On king d6, the king can't really run after bishop f4 check is dragged back to its uh, demise uh, in this variation. This is horrible. Look at this. Checkmate. So uh, we have knight takes f6. And now queen g6. Uh, now, yeah, there's there's a horrible <laughs> amount of pressure here. The king's so exposed. Uh, this is not Leela's cup of tea or anyone's cup of tea. After rook takes f6, this actually wins material now. Uh, so g takes is played because if queen takes, can you see? Bishop g5 pins the queen to the king. That's winning. So g takes. So bishop up. Yeah, uh, it's all over. There's an EMP and electromagnetic pulse. Stockfish is going to win this game. <laughs> Unless it's going to be disconnected or something or something horrible happens. Stockfish is winning in this game. It's a piece up. So C3. Uh, yeah, Leela's I'm trying to do something, I guess. But the king's too exposed now after queen takes D7. You might think, well, rook G8. Stockfish has, has, the, has this covered with a bishop sack because it's enough to make the king here. So if if the king had moved, uh, that would be a very bad idea. Uh, queen h1 check and Leela gets the checkmate. Very unlikely, uh, even against Stockfish 1. I think Stockfish 1 would see this. So king f3 uh, check, rook g2, and that will be winning the queen. So it's, it's important to play this bishop g5. Uh, yeah, keeping the king safe before going on to the attack. Check. Okay, and now here, check. The king goes to g4. Black is running out of checks. Check rook g3. Uh, okay, so you might think, hold on a sec. Isn't the rook needed for, for white's attack? The rook here goes back to d3, threatening d, rook d6. Uh, f takes rook d6, yeah, winning the queen basically. g takes, king takes. A few spike checks. And here, yeah, you know, both engines agree. White's absolutely crushing it, uh, and uh, it's adjudicated as a, a win for White. If, for example, check, uh, sorry, if King e7, it's continue, then there's nothing. Uh, the Queen's going to be one. It's it's absolutely winning. Uh, so, uh, so the final position. Okay, uh, in a nutshell, I think the opening had some. The way Stockfish played it, the the opening was used by Stockfish to kind of weaken Black's king through this ingenious pawn sacrifice e4. Uh, if Black hadn't played f5, maybe there'd be sterling resistance. But once f5 has been played, Stockfish is like uh, a vulture around, <laughs> uh, yeah, the the king side. It's it's picking up. Uh, that the king side really is an open invitation to get the pieces around there. So perhaps, you know, instructive for the attacking and tactical player this game. Uh, if you enjoyed this game video, then please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly to become a member at chessworld.net. Play against other YouTubers and test yourself on all the variations covered in this game uh, from the improved menu, the new puzzle books facility. Uh, which also has a link to the annotated game itself. Comments, questions, donations, see the description. Like, share, subscribe with the notification bell. Really appreciated. Thanks very much.